Great. Aloha, everybody, and welcome to the 2022 Puna Strong Virtual Resource Fair. Over the last year, Equality High has worked to provide information and resources that we hope creates a network of organizations that create and promote resiliency within our Puna district and also our community as a whole. Today, you'll be hearing from many representatives of organizations who provide amazing services to our friends, our relatives, and ourselves to bounce back addressing areas of employment and financial literacy, housing resources, healthcare, domestic violence and human trafficking, community building, Hawaiian culture and LGBTQ history and culture. Throughout today, I encourage everyone to explore the platform, visit our exhibitor hall to find out information about our speakers and our organizations and many, many more. Also pop into our community rooms and join a discussion forum or even start one. Network with other attendees, break the ice, and create long-term connections. The format of today's session is a combination of both recorded and live sessions. So if you are attending a recorded session, leave your comments and questions in the chat box, and we'll do our best to get them to the speakers and get them answered. So our first speaker today, we have Ashley Perkiewicz, and she was born and raised here on Hawaii Island and was first elected in 2018 to represent Council District 4 and she is serving her second term. She is focused on empowering community, leveraging private public partnerships and activating local economies so all residents can thrive. Ashley is a chair of the Committee on Planning and Housing Agency. She is vice chair of the Committee on Governmental Relations, Operations and Economic Development and the Committee on Human and Social Services. She leads the Revitalized Puna Activation and co-chairs the Economic Resilience Capacity Areas to support eruption recovery, overseeing community-based projects such as resilience hubs, technology and innovation, and industry and workforce development. Ashley also represents Hawaii in the national level as a member of the NACO Resilient Counties Advisory Board and the NACO Arts and Culture Commission. She serves as a volunteer board member of Vibrant Hawaii and chairs the Economy Stream and Resilience Hub Stream. She is the community representative for the Pahoa High and Interest Schools Community Council. Ashley and her partner Kawi, a county firefighter, are proud parents of two children, Arya and Toby, and reside in Hawaiian Paradise Park. So it is my privilege to introduce, introduce Ashley Kirkiewicz. Mahalo, Ray, for that really kind introduction. And thank you, Mar, for the invitation to connect with your group again. Really appreciate all of the hard work that has um, gone into organizing today's event. Um, so much incredible information. I hope people really do appreciate and take advantage of everything that you have pulled together. I wish I could stay all day. Um, but again, mahalo nui for your service and connecting community members with outstanding resources and community. Um, when you first invited me to speak during your inaugural fair, I touched upon the collective journey we as the community had gone through, all the disasters we faced starting back from Tropical Storm Izell, the two lava flows, Hurricane Maine, the COVID pandemic. We have just been hit over and over again. But I think through that, we as a Puna community know how to be incredibly resilient and not just bounce back, but really bounce forward. So today I wanted to just spend a few minutes talking about some of the work that is happening right now in Puna as it relates to building up Puna's long-term recovery, preparedness, and resilience. We are doing that through the Revitalized Puna Activation Series. And this is something new. It is a very deliberate and intentional partnership between the county um, and community partners. And it's really designed to build relationships, increase trust, and to take action on a shared vision. And that vision is something that we all contributed to over the course of a couple of years following the eruption, and that can be found in the Kilauea Recovery and Resilience Plan. Um, our commitment through Revitalize Puna is to show up consistently. We organize quarterly activations um, to connect county, state, and even federal partners direct with Puna residents. These activations are not just for folks that were impacted by the eruption. It's really any Puna resident that is interested, that cares about just creating a more thriving um, and healthy and vibrant Puna. Everybody can contribute. That's the big message that I want to be able to share. We all have passion and interest areas. And if we all just do a little bit, we can really build a very strong Puna community. 
Our next activation is actually happening next week, Monday, April 11th at Sure Foundation. We are so excited because we had wanted to get together in person in January, but the COVID numbers prevented us from doing that. We do feel safe coming together next week. So if you can, please join us a little later. I'll go ahead and drop the registration info in the chat. But we are going to be having representatives from county government give us an update on roads recovery, as well as recovery of water and parks infrastructure. We will also have representatives um, from state DLNR talk to us about status of uh, restoration of Pohoiki boat ramp. We will also have U.S. Geological Survey um, on board to give us an update on a project we have been working on, which is to do a groundwater sampling to ensure that our coastal ecosystems, our groundwater resources um, are safe and healthy. Uh, we will also be having representatives from Mass Transit Agency to give updates on where we are with the Pahoa Bus Hub and to talk about the free fares and the routes that are available in Pune. We will also have environmental management there to talk about the wastewater um, feasibility study that's happening for Pohoa, as well as a programmatic EIS, which would identify how we could potentially bring in wastewater collection uh, and services throughout the Pune region. So there is so much incredible information and great work happening at all levels of government. Um, and we just invite everybody to come, get educated, and also get involved in your area of interest. Uh, ways in which you can get involved, sign up to be part of a resilience capacity area. When we, as the county, took a look at how we can make progress on the Kilauea Recovery um, and Resilience Plan, we really came from an assets-based development approach. We wanted to make sure that we as the county were stepping up in ways that we knew how, and that residents were also provided space to do things as well. And so we've organized all of our work um, in resilience capacity areas, and that's really based on an islands a resilience framework as you know we as island nations as an island state have so many uh challenges but also opportunities that we face because of our location um, away from places like the continent and so we really have to be very sustainable and thoughtful to ensure that we have a very secure and resilient future so our uh, capacity areas include um focus on social cultural economic built environment, natural environment, and youth. It's how we organize ourselves. It's how we organize the actions in the recovery and resilience plans. Um, and it's a way in which we are able to work in greater alignment and more strategically leveraging the people and resources we need to take action. Um, I'm just gonna admit something straight up. It hasn't been the easiest path. Um, I think we can have all the plans and frameworks in the world, but taking all of those really complex ideas um, and trying to make things happen requires a lot of work. It requires patience. It requires discipline and understanding and really open-mindedness. Um, we've embraced a, an iterative sort of approach throughout this process where we're coming up with ideas and we're implementing together in real time. And we're not staying satisfied. We're constantly evaluating our work so that we are ensuring that when we move forward, we're doing it in a way that has been proven that works well for every single stakeholder involved. So we're really excited about that. When we launched the Revitalize Puna Activation Series, we went really broad. We were very ambitious in so many things that we wanted to do because we felt really strongly in supporting our community of Puna um, which has been historically uh, disenfranchised and under-resourced, wanting to make up for that lost time and just recognizing the significant challenges faced following all the natural disasters and emergencies that were experienced. And so we wanted to make sure we were doing so much for community and with community. In that experience, we recognize it's okay to edit yourself. It is okay to edit yourself and really focus on projects and strategies that are going to drive deep and broad impact. And so we have been able to whittle down our list of commitments um, into a few strategies. So I will share those with you. We are calling these our resilience commitments and they are based on projects that we have been working on since um, the series launched in June of last year. Um, and these also connect with the 
um, items that were identified in the Kilauea Recovery and Resource Plan. Again, that is our North Star, our guiding document, and that's because more than 3,000 Puna residents contributed to that. And we want to restore faith and trust in government. We don't want you to just constantly say what you want. We want to make sure that we are taking action so that when we ask you to be involved, you trust that these things are going to happen because there are tangible results that you are seeing based on the mana'o that was shared previously. Okay, so where we've landed, our resilience commitments. Paint Pahoa Town. This is a paint refresh of businesses in downtown Pahoa aimed at revitalizing space. The painting is going to be kicking off um, later this month, but no later than May. We are looking to do that over the course of a couple of months. We will unveil at a big block party, Activate Puna in July. Um, we are looking for folks to help volunteer we are also working with local artists um, to elevate um, a mele of Puna and infuse those elements into the artwork and the painting refresh. So that's our first project. Our second project is Revitalize Pohoiki. It's a planning initiative to restore Isaac Kipo'okalani Hale Park um, and create a vision as well as a stewardship plan for the greater Pohoiki area. Our third commitment is the Pahoa Village Master Plan. Not sure if folks know, but this process was first started in 2015. Then we experienced that lava flow. It restarted in 2018. Then we had the Kilauea eruption. Um, there was no real ability for folks to act on it during the pandemic, but we think third time's a charm and there is funding available within our planning department. Um, and so we are moving through that process. And what it's gonna do is establish a design framework that provides a front foundation for the future evolution of Pahoa Town. Um, we are also looking at helping our Puna community in establishing resilience hubs and resilience spaces. Again, these are people-driven operations that support ongoing community resilience and mobilize in times of disaster to provide emergency support. We saw that during the 2018 flow with Pu'uhonua Opuna, really used that to catalyze what we were able to do uh, during the COVID pandemic to support communities in developing their resilience hubs so that they could support their residents in the best way that they knew how. The next commitment we are focusing on is an enhancement of our local food systems, really establishing Puna as the island's breadbasket and creating a suite of niche growing operations that are supported by value added product development and export. Our other commitment is economic development focus groups. There was a strategy that was developed by the Institute for Sustainable Development. Um, and that really identified industries that are conducive to the Hawaii Island community. Uh, we are going to be facilitating conversations with Puna businesses to understand what their challenges are, what do they face that way we as government and even private sector knows where we need to move the needle, where we might need to be able to remove regulatory roadblocks or create incentives so that people that want to create businesses, scale them up, they are able to do so, they are supported and they can contribute to a thriving economy. Um, another resilience commitment is asset and vulnerability mapping. We are establishing a framework, a directory of sorts that um, identifies who in community can contribute during times of, of crisis, but also where our kupuna, you know, single moms are, so that in the event of a disaster, we can be sure that we are reaching out to those that are the most vulnerable and in need and can ensure that they are getting the support uh, in order to move through the crisis. And finally, we are no stranger to disasters. We are looking to focus some time and energy around ensuring that every resident and every community in Puna um, is prepared uh, during a time of emergency and is also equipped and supported and coordinated in their response. So those are the commitments that we have landed on that the resilience capacity areas um, have worked on and are continuing to work on. All of the work that we are doing is being supported through a USDA grant that is the Rural Placemaking Innovation Challenge, something that my office and the recovery team um, submitted and was awarded. We were awarded in October of last year. That provides us with $225,000 um, in federal funding uh, that allows us to hire a full-time coordinator so that I'm not having to coordinate it full-time on top of being a council member. Um, but we also have resources to support all the commitments that I mentioned to you. We also have many youth that are involved in these initiatives 
and they want to do stuff and we want to be able to support that. So this money from USDA allows us to do that. What it also does, because this is a cooperative agreement, is it provides entree into all the different funding opportunities that USDA Rural Development Office provides. At this moment in time, I cannot impress upon how much money is out there and available. USDA has to hire entities in order to inform communities of all of these opportunities. And so USDA is going to be helping our Puna community through our resilience commitments, identify what capital stacks are needed to make those projects happen, but also what resources would be most meaningful to our community partners. So if you have ideas, do let us know. We're gonna be convening conversations with USDA so that you all have an understanding of what funding is out there uh, and what's really needed and required in order for you to submit a successful application. So we're really excited about that. The other partnership that we are continuing to um, leverage is the technical assistance that we received from Council on Development Finance Agencies, or CDFA. We're one of six communities that was selected, again, um, to be provided technical assistance in creating a funding strategy um, to support resilience hubs and enhanced food systems in Pune. The stakeholders were here visiting with uh, community partners, county administration in October of last year. We've continued to stay in touch with them, um, and we should be expecting a first draft of where they think we can be securing funding to make these projects happen later this month. So as soon as we have that information, we will be sharing all of that out with you. Um, also really excited to share um, that our county is one of six that was chosen across the country um, for the NACL, that's the National Association um, of Counties, creative placemaking challenge. And so there are components of the revitalized Pohoiki initiative that I mentioned to you on um, that placemaking initiative where we are ensuring that um, improvements are made so that families can go and have a good time, but also recognizing that there are a number of visitors that come and visit that vahipana and may not know. And so there are ways in which we want to be elevating interpretive signage and artwork uh, to tell the rich stories, the mo'olelo of pohoiki, but also let folks know the sort of right intention um, they need to be coming into the space with. And so this being part of the creative placemaking challenge will allow us to access experts um, from across the country to help design what that looks like really excited that joining me in this project are Nainua Rose Hill, uh, local artist, Puna resident, as well as Auntie Anna Marie Cohn. Um, they are gonna be serving as part of a core team with myself, along with the Pangea Seed Foundation, which is a global organization whose founders are actually based in Pune. Um, they coordinate a number of projects around the world that elevates sustainability and climate change issues through art. So we've got a really dynamic team. Um, we've just done our kickoff meetings, and I will be excited to share more about this journey with you. I'm sharing all of this because if you ever needed validation that what we are doing is incredible and innovative and unique, we have national partners that say Puna you're amazing. You are so incredibly amazing. We appreciate your vision. We appreciate your, your people and your passion and everything that you are doing to just empower and elevate your community. So that makes me feel really good because it, in my mind, helps to shift a lot of the deficit narratives that come with people thinking about Pune. Pune is a very strong, beautiful community. And I think these national partnerships really go to show that we have a lot to offer and that we can really be a model community for not just, you know, other counties, but really for the world. So with that, Mar, Ray, Mahalanui again for inviting me to just share a little bit about things that are happening in this space where people can get involved. Happy to answer any questions folks might have. All right, thank you, Ashley, for a very engaging presentation there. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm going to throw this out to our viewers. Does anyone have any questions for Ashley? You can type them in the chat, and we'll make sure she gets them. Um, but Ashley, I do want to um, talk a little bit about the resilience capacity errors we talked about, because I know there are several of them. How does one get involved with that? Is there like a, a website that they can find out who their local contact person is, or how do one get involved? 
Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pop into the chat. The best way to do that, you can email um, aloha at revitalizepuna.org. Put that in there. You can also take a look at the various opportunities that we have available to folks um, at recovery.hawaiicounty.gov slash revitalizepuna. Um, we are looking to create a revitalized Puna landing page specifically to talk about all of the work of the RCAs, but also give a platform for community partners to kind of contribute content as well. So all the information can be found on that landing page. But if you're curious and want to learn more, certainly reach out to us via email. Fantastic. Actually, I don't see any questions in the chat, but if anything comes up, we will definitely uh, forward them to you to see if we can get them answered. So I do want to uh, thank you again for being here and uh, presenting some great information and some great updates. Mahalo so much. Thanks, Ray. Thanks, Mar. And I'm going to go ahead and pop into the chat details about next week, Monday's activation. Really hope to see all of you there. We're going to have plant cuttings to give away. There's a cakey craft station, updates from county, state, federal partners, and even food truck vouchers. So see you all there. Take care. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you, everybody, for attending this session. And we will make sure that we are uh, getting all of that information out to you. So thank you so much. And hopefully you take advantage of each of the exhibitor booths and also the community networking. So thank you so much and enjoy the rest of the fair model.